The good news about trig equations at grade 12 level is they don't get more complex. The only thing that we start doing is we start sticking double and compound angles into them. Okay, so all of the other skills you've learned in grade 11 will be really useful and just then applied to the double angles. Okay, so with double angles there's always the question of to expand or not to expand and I think we'll, with, more, with lots of practice you'll start seeing when to do that and when not to. It really helps to know the double and compound formulas off by heart because then you start recognizing them a lot quicker. Okay, so first step here is recognizing that you've got a sine squared and a cos squared okay of theta and of theta okay and then this is now not a theta this is a two theta so the reason I'm going to expand it and your reasons really are important the reason I will expand it is because if I expand this I get just an ordinary theta and when I've got everything the same I might have a trinomial or grouping or something I can factorize that will actually work. Okay, so the problem is that 2 theta does not go with theta. You feel like it does, but it really doesn't. So I'm going to expand because the angle is not the same. Okay, so let's copy and paste this. It is going to get quite big and then it's going to get a lot smaller. So now I'm going to expand the sine 2 theta, okay? The 2 stays there and then I expand it. Sine 2 theta only expands one way, which is 2 sine theta cos theta. Okay, and you can see if I was going back to a formula sheet now, it would slow me down and I also might not have known what to do quite quickly. I might not have recognized that. Okay, this stays the same. And 2 times 2 will give me 4. So I'm going to do all the little baby steps with this one because I think the algebra, which should be easy, can get confusing because it's in the new context of trig. Right, let me see what I've got. 3 something squared, 4. Okay, I know that's a squared, but it's still the same angle, which is great. I'm going to use I'm going to use a k method or a substitution method. I won't actually use k. I'm going to use x and y because I've got I've got sine and I've got cos. So let me do that. Let me say let let sine theta equal x and let cos theta equal y. If you haven't seen this before. Um, really pay attention because it's an awesome method to use for quite a few issues we have with equations, including ones with exponents. Okay, so if I do that, I'm just going to do all my substitution in red and then take it back to black to isolate what I'm doing. Some of, some of you will not need to do the, the substitution method. You'll be able to see straight away that that's a trinomial. Something squared, the two multiplied, and then the other one squared means it's a trinomial. But let's rewrite this with x's and y's. So I'm going to say 3x squared plus 4, that's x, that's y, plus cos squared, but cos was y, so it's y squared. Perhaps you can see now that it's a trinomial. Okay, so obviously your ability to factorize is really critical here because it's not one where you can... I suppose you could use the formula, um, but we... It would be really useful to be able to put these into two brackets at this point. Okay, so I want I want factors of 3 and 1 that give me 4. I think that's relatively straightforward. So I'm going to have so I'm going to have 3 and 1, and then this is going to be 1 and 1. So 3 times 1 is 3, and 1 times 1 is 1. So I've got 3 and 1. I have to add them, and then they're both going to have the same sign, just to revise the factorizing stuff. So my brackets will then go 3 and 1, and 1 and 1. So I'm going to go 3x and y, and I'm going to go x and y, and they're both going to have pluses. Okay, at this point I'm not going to solve. At this point I'm going to go back and substitute in what I originally changed. So now where I've got an x, I'm going to stick the sine, and where I've got a y, I'm going to stick the cos. So subbing back,
we're going to go 3 sine theta plus cos theta. And then here, it's going to just be sine theta plus cos theta. And that was equals 0. So now it looks like a grade 11 one, where I just need to let that equal 0, let that equal 0, two answers for that, two answers for that. Some of them might be invalid. Okay, I'm going to go through that now. Okay, so using the zero factor rule, those are my two options. This should yield two answers, and the other one should also yield two answers. So I'm ending up with four. Or that's what I'm thinking right now. Okay, so let's start here. Um, I've got a sine and a cos. They both have the same angle, so this one is going to be one of those that makes a tan. I'm going to move the cos over, and I'm going to say 3 sine theta equals negative cos theta. And then I'm going to divide both sides by cos theta. Okay, so this will give me 3 tan theta, and this will give me negative 1. Then I want to isolate the tan theta, so tan theta will give me negative 1 over 3. So tan is negative. When I do my reference angle now, I'm going to shift tan just the 1 over 3, not the negative because what the negative gives me is it just gives me the quads. It's clearly quad 2 and quad 4 because tan is negative. Right, when I shift it, I get a reference angle of 18,43 degrees. Okay, but now this thing is a tan. And when you have a tan, you don't need to go quad 2 and 4 because the one includes the other one. So I'm going to do it all in one. I'm going to say, okay, well, quad 2 and quad 4, you don't even need to say that. I'm just writing it so that you understand I'm dealing with the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to say in quad 2 and 4, I'm going to have theta equals 180 degrees minus the 18,43 degrees plus K180, which gives me the quad 4. Okay, so that just gives me... Theta is 161,57 degrees plus K180. Back up to the other half of this. We have sine theta plus cos theta zero. So again, I'm going to move the cos across. And I'm going to say sine theta equals negative cos theta. I'm going to divide both sides by cos theta. This is also going to be a tan. And the reason it's going to be a tan is because the angles are exactly the same. So that will give me a tan theta, and this will give me a negative 1. Okay, now I'm going to shift the 1, but what I know from that is tan again is negative, so it's quad 2 and 4, but I know because it's tan, I'm just going to do them together. So my reference angle will be 45 degrees, Okay, which isn't one of my answers because I'm supposed to be in quad 2 or 4. So I'm also going to do these guys together quad 2 and 4 together, and I'm going to say theta is 180 minus my reference angle, plus k 180. So therefore, it is 135 degrees plus k 180. Right, k is an element of integers. Okay, so when you see a double, you should expand it. No, not always. Let's look at this example. Now, it might have been a while since you've done these. And I think I've just given my secret away there by saying that. There's a double angle. Okay, now just imagine all of the different ways in which you could expand this thing. There's three of them. And then look at that angle. Now, how am I supposed to know that this does not involve expanding? And here's your secret. The one we just did had a sine squared and a cos squared in it, and then your expanding of the sine double angle gave you sine and a cos, which gave you the trinomial. So this is all about recognizing the patterns. Here, you've got a totally different thing. 
Like there's no way in which this is ever going to make that. If you had sine theta on that side, absolutely expand this because it'll give you sine, th th sine thetas and cos thetas and you'll just have theta by itself. It will be squared, but you'll have theta and theta. But there's absolutely no way you're going to get the angles the same. And that's one of the agendas with trig equations. Okay, so you may recognize this from grade 11 work as one where you've got to do a co-function. So the whole point here is your 2 theta cannot be expanded to get you theta minus 60. Okay, so because that's never going to give you that, I do not expand this double angle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to treat them as co-functions. Okay, and last year co-functions may have felt doable. And now when you look at them, because you know more, so your extra knowledge is actually possibly disempowered you a little bit because you see a double angle and you want to expand it, but you mustn't. Okay, so last year you would have just done this straight away with your grade 11 knowledge and now in grade 12 you've got other options and sometimes having too many options is dangerous. Okay, the point is you need to recognize we're not to expand. What you've got to do now is you need to do a name change. Okay, so I need to change this one into a sign. We always change the right hand side and we must recognize that the sign of an angle is a positive thing. Okay, so sine is positive, and that's going to help us just now. So I'm going to take my sine of that, and I'm going to change this one. This one's now going to be 90 minus my 2 theta. Okay, so now I've got sine of something equals sine of something else, and sine is positive, so it's quad 1 and 2. Here, I'm going to shift sine in my head, both sides. I'm not dividing by sine. I'm just saying, well, if sine of this angle equals sine of that angle, the two angles have to be the same. So I'm just going to make the two angles the same. And I'm going to bracket the second one as a tactic for when I'm going to put it into a quad where I'm minusing stuff. Now, sine was positive. Because sine was positive, I'm dealing with quad 1 and quad 2. So that's where my two answers go. Okay, in quad 1, I'm going to have exactly that. I'm going to have theta minus 60 equals 90 minus 2 theta plus K360. Okay, and K is an element of integers. And I'm going to solve that. So I'm going to have my 2 theta moved across. And that's going to give me 3 theta there. Then I'm going to take the 90. I'm going to add on 60. So I'm going to get 150 degrees plus K 360. Then I'm going to divide everything through by 3. So I'm going to have theta equals 50 degrees plus K 120. We still want general solution and nothing more, so that's my answer for that quad. In quad 2, I've got to go 180 minus, so that's why I put the bracket there. I'm going to say theta minus 60 degrees equals 180 minus that, minus the whole thing, which is why I'm bracketing it. Okay, so theta minus 60. Okay, that is plus K360, just trying to squeeze it in there. So I'm going to have here 180 minus 90 plus 2 theta plus K360. And then just adding up all my like terms, I end up with the 2 theta going here. So it's going to be a negative theta equals my 180 minus 90 plus the 60. So I'm going to have 150 plus K360. Okay, now I can just divide through by negative and I can end up with theta is negative 150 degrees 
minus k, k360. K is an element of integers.